Here at the BFI National Archive, we have over a million cans of film. 100,000 of those are advertising films. Through the BFI Player online, we're creating an advertising collection which will consist of only a, a small sample of those, but a very important sample. We're looking at releasing around about 300 typical commercials, and that collection spans right from the beginning of Moving Pictures, around 1900. Within the, the 300 that we're planning to release in our new player collection, we focused on a collection of just 25. Those commercials that everybody remembers, the really famous ones, the really heartwarming ones, the ones that have just gone down in history as iconic adverts, of which the Hovis advert, uh, the boy on the bike, is really absolutely one of those 25. I couldn't find a copy for a long, long time, and then I struck lucky one day and I found a copy in a very large collection which came to the BFI. Just We agreed that we really must have this, this remastered and, and spend some time with it. Advertising on film is a wonderful way of reflecting on British history in that sense. Um, well, this is the first part of the process of restoration um, where we would get all of the different copies of any particular title and examine them on the synchronizer bench so that we can get an overview of the physical condition of the film so we're looking to see if there's any kind of damage uh, there might be tears or um, perfs missing we're also looking at the photographic quality and as you can see with this one you've got three copies and the colors have, have faded over the years so they've gone very magenta so as i'm running these films side by side on the bench it's really easy for me to see straight away if there's any footage missing from one particular copy. We're going to scan the film. So this is one of the magenta prints. Hopefully the, the scans that we get, the image sequence that we get, is as clean as it's been since it was the camera and egg itself. When the, uh, the Hovis distribution prints first came in, there were, there were three to examine. So I digitised all three and compared them for audio quality. The main problem with them was that of uh, noise, where you have optical artefacts on the film which are producing clicks and pops and kind of rustling sounds, etc. Uh, that's not something that can be corrected when you scan it. That needs to be fixed after scanning in a digital restoration session. What this does, this, this machine, is take a, a live image of the soundtrack on the edge of the film. We've got the picture taking up most of the width and the, the optical soundtrack to one side. So this, this camera on the uh, machine is looking only at the soundtrack. So we get a live image of the soundtrack. So the picture is over here somewhere out of shot, if you like. And it's making this TIFF file, digital image file of this soundtrack, and doing some real-time cleaner um, optically on the on the actual image so it's removing uh, s uh, small uh, lumps of dirt or scratches to produce a, a cleaner output. So here we're uh, assessing all of the scans that have been made so that's picking the best material from all the surviving elements and and then deciding what action we can take to you know, make the corrections for the, for the final master. So that will be, uh, you know, deflicker, stabilisation, uh, image repair, so taking away tears and dirt, uh, and crucially, reinstating the colour. What we're looking at here is the uncorrected scan. So this is all the clever bells and whistles turned off just to get a feel for what we were coping with, you know, the state of the original so that you can see it. Let me just switch on the next layer, which is the corrected scan. Uh, so now, of course, the, the black in the frame area has gone a bit green. That's because of the massive correction away from magenta and into green. And the next layer, of course, is the correction. So it's now been stabilised, it's been deflickered, the dirt's been removed, and crucially, we've got the grade on it. Grind right back though. Oh, he knew Baker at Afghanistan. This was a dull day, a flat day. The weather was a bit of misty, and when I went there in the morning, and this 
was flat as hell, so it didn't look very good. So I'd finished by around about four o'clock, and started to put things back into the trucks, and the sun came out. And I raced back to the first day saying, put it all back down, get it all out, I'm gonna reshoot it. It was perfect, because hill was that, like that, and the sun was kind of setting back like, it was kind of marvelous. It's an absolute delight to hear this track, uh, this combined print, because it's so iconic and familiar. And the, the beautiful, evocative, warm sound of that colliery brass band uh, to send shivers, you know, and to have this on the machine, it's, it's just wonderful. Yeah, it's taken me right back to my childhood. And it's been a really, really fun, rewarding project to work on. When I first found out that Hope is planned to revamp the Boy on the Bike commercial, uh, it was a wonderful feeling. It's great to know that the interest is, is there. It's great to know that from a curatorial perspective, people will want to come back and investigate the original. We're in a position now to say we've remastered that. And it's a really great feeling from an archive perspective to say that because of that remastering work, there is now a modern revamp that, that harks back to tradition. Stop on round to be old Ma Peggerty's place. It was like taking bread to the top of the world. It was a grand ride back though. I knew Baker'd have kettle on and slices of hot ovis ready. Get it inside you, boy, he'd say. You must have gone up that hill as fast as you came down. Hovis, as good today as it's always been.